Silhouette Studio Page Setup Panel, Detailed Guide. Step 1, the page setup panel opens up automatically when you open Silhouette Studio and is located on the top right toolbar. Step 2, on the top of the page setup there are three tabs Page Setup Grid Settings and Registration Marks. Step 3, in the Page Setup tab choose the machine you're cutting from the machine drop-down. Step 4, next choose the Mat option from the Cutting Mat drop-down. Step 5, if you have a mat selected a virtual map will show up on the design screen. Step 6, if you have no mat selected you'll only see a representation of the media. Step 7, next you can change the media size from the drop-down. Step 8, you can also set the media size as a template by setting it to the size of the blank you'll be using. Step 9, to set it as a template set the media size size to custom then use the slider or input boxes to enter the measurement. Step 10, when you pull the transparency slider to the right it becomes more transparent and allows you to see the virtual mat underneath. Step 11, if the constraint media to cutting mat checkbox is unchecked you can set the media size larger than the cutting mat. Step 12, if the constraint media to cutting mat checkbox is checked the media must fit into the mat and measure no larger than 12 by 12 or 12 by 24. Step 13, the orientation feature offers portrait orientation and landscape orientation. Step 14, the media color feature allows users to change the virtual media color which will not print and will not interfere with the actual design. Step 15, the rotate view feature allows users to spin the mat. Step 16, the last feature is the print and cut border feature with show print border and show cut border options. Step 17, moving to the second tab grid settings it makes lining designs up easier. Step 18, the options features allow you to turn on and off the grid and guide. Step 19, to create a guide double click on either ruler on the top and right side and pull the blue line to wherever you need on the mat. Step 20, if you pull from the top ruler it'll create a horizontal guide. Step 21, if you pull from the right side ruler it'll create a vertical guide. Step 22, if you hover over the guide, you can right-click and bring up some options or double-click and reposition the guide. Step 23, under the options feature there's snapping option snap to grid and snap to guides. Step 24, when you turn on the snap to grid feature grab a shape and the element will be placed right at the grid line. Step 25, when you select the snap to guides option and pull the element towards the guide and you can line it up perfectly. Step 26, you also have the option to turn ruler on and off when you select ruler the ruler will appear on the top and right side of the screen. Step 27, when you deselect the ruler the top and side ruler will disappear from the screen. Step 28, Next to the ruler you have crosshairs another way to help line up design elements. Step 29, turn on the crosshairs and you'll notice two vertical and two horizontal lines that meet at the center of the cursor. Step 30, if you want a clear visual of where things line up on the mat and in relation to other objects crosshairs is a great tool. Step 31, the smart snapping feature is another alignment tool. Step 32, check the Enable Smart Snipping box and when you line up two elements a blue line will appear. Step 33, when you check the Smart Snap only within Media option the software only detects the elements that are in the media settings. Step 34, the Tolerance slider will determine how close to alignment the object needs to be. Step 35, the spacing feature presents square and isometric options. Step 36, the square is just typical grid lines and the isometric is a diagonal grid. Step 37, the spacing slider and input allow users to adjust the size of the squares or diagonal shapes. 
Step 38, the division slider and input allow users to create secondary lines between the primary grid marks. Step 39, the color feature allows users to change the color of the primary and secondary lines separately. Step 40, the registration marks tab is all about print and cut. Step 41, the first feature in the registration mark tab is to turn the registration mark on and off. Step 42, you can increase or decrease the length of the registration marks using the length slider or input under dimensions. Step 43, you can adjust the thickness of the registration marks using the thickness slider or input. Step 44, in the position feature adjust the inset slider to scale the design area up or down leaving it centered on the print page. Step 45, if you click on advanced options you can adjust the size of the design area with more control left inset, top inset, right inset and bottom inset. Step 46, when you click the restore defaults button it will reset the registration marks settings back to default. Step 47, the orientation feature offers a visual aid the inverted option flips the whole mat and the default is the original placement of the mat. Step 48, with the print bleed feature you can print designs with color extended beyond the original design. Step 49, you can adjust the bleed radius using the slider and input box. Step 50, when you enable the barcode feature a barcode will be printed on the upper left side of the print and cut design. Step 51, when you load a design with a barcode the silhouette machine will read the barcode and cut the design according to the original file setup. For more such help and information, visit us at www.manymaker.com or call us at plus one seven eight six eight six six five nine three two plus four four zero two zero three nine eight three zero four eight zero